Hello, a great welcome to Ideas Tariqa tutorial. Myself is Jairajan P. This is tutorial number 17. Here I will demonstrate the modeling and analysis of a monopole base, which essentially consists of a circular base plate provided with a circular array of angle boards. The monopole is subjected to axial loads, shear, and bending moment. The loads and geometry of base plate used for the monopole is shown here. The core checks covers the various components such as the base plate, anchor bolts, and concrete. So let us start idea static tutorial number 17. Please note that the links for other tutorials are already provided under the video description. So let us directly take the model from the connection wizard. So we'll choose a circular uh, section and uh, the geometry will be taken corresponding to the base plate and uh, we will start uh, filling the parameters so we can write down here this is a monopole monopole structure and the description we can write down the base plate design base plate design and uh, the steel grid will be s275 and the anchor bolt let us just add we will go for the say 4.6 a lower grade because uh, it is approximately I think that is a 250 newton per square with a phi and uh, with a bolt of uh, say M24 or let us keep it as a slightly larger one that is a M30 so we will keep it as an M30 bolt so M34.6 ok so we will keep the concrete grade as C2530 and the design code will be as per the EC3 so let us start create the project So as you can see that uh, the model is already created we need to just uh, update the model for uh, our design parameters so the member let us first straight away go for m1 m1 will be will just add another member for a circular part so we'll just add it to a chs section so that uh, the, the diameter of the section will keep it as say 800 so this will keep it as 800 and the thickness let us keep it as a 100 mm so this is our 100 mm and uh, the steel grid will be as 275 to be ended and uh, it's a column member so it is a gamma is 90 degrees and we'll keep this as uh, the loads being uh, at a particular position so uh, with access to 0 mm so let us start now feeding the parameters associated with the base plate so it is m1 as 275 and uh, will provide a base plate thickness of uh, 25 mm 25 mm and uh, we'll keep the dimensions at circle and now let us go for the offsets so the various offsets that we use is radius is equal to we'll keep it as a 640 mm as shown in the sketch so this will be 640 mm and we'll keep it as a from member and the horizontal and the rotation will be 0 degrees now so let us straight away go for uh, the angles for the angles so we can call it as uh, m30 4.6 it is already selected and it is very important here that uh, the anchor bolt material type should be compatible with the concrete grid otherwise what happens is that we will find that the anchor bolts will be heavily underutilized so here uh, corresponding to C2530 a grid selection of 4.6 is good enough so type will keep it as M34.6 and uh, coming to the anchor length we will keep it as uh, 750 mm so let us keep it as a 750 mm and then the angle type will be straight and the radius radius will keep it as a, for example in this case it is a 520 mm so we'll keep it as a 520 mm okay and the number will be 12 and the shear plane will be in the in the thread only and the wells for the flanges we will not mention any well size and for the web that is for the Weld size will keep it a little bit lesser, that is, 8 mm should be good enough, and this is okay. So, now coming to the concrete rate, it will be C2530, and the offset will just increase it a little bit higher so that it can provide a good resistance in the con mode failure. So, we will keep it as a 600 mm here, and the depth will keep it as a 1000 mm. So, this is 1000 mm, 1000 mm, and the shear force. Uh, transfer will be assumed through the friction mechanism and the standoff will be taken as direct though such parts are normally founded on a high strength ground for this example we will take it as it's a standoff directly 
is placed in the concrete and uh, that's all regarding uh, the model so you can see it so this is the model we have you can say that it is and uh, see that the base plate it is not an analog base plate it uh, runs uh, throughout the uh, cross section so and uh, as shown here it is provided with uh, 12 numbers of uh, anchor bolts of m30 diameter and it is placed directly on concrete and uh, you can see that the concrete offset is 600 mm as marked in the sketch and uh, now we need to up update the model for the loads so let us apply the loads of nc to minus 500 that's okay and regarding vz we'll keep it as a minus 50 so let us keep it as a minus 50 here and then uh, regarding the moment so moment will let us keep it as a 500 kN meter 500 kN meter that's okay so let us just Zoom it and see whether it is properly applied or not. Okay, so you can see that there's an axial load and there's a shear and there's an applied moment. So now let us uh, uh, straight away go for uh, the calculation of the model. So as you can see, the model is already run, it is uh, executed, and we can see that uh, all the components have passed the test. The analysis has run for 100% of the loads. And you can see that the plates are okay with the strains uh, much below the 5% level and the utility ratio for the angles is of the order of 0.84 and for the welds it is 0.9 and for the concrete block it is 60.4 percentage and for the shear it is 17.4 uh, that means uh, all the components have passed the test so let us uh, quickly go for uh, the verification uh, component by component so we can go for uh, first of all uh, regarding the analysis as expected it is a uh, uh, calculated for 100% of the applied loads. Now coming to the plates, we find that let us quickly go for uh, the distribution of the plastic strains. So we have seen that the strains are uh, uh, it's, uh, less than 5 percentage, it is of the order of 0 percentage. And let us uh, quickly see which is a critical component. So here we find that uh, the base plate, okay, the base plate that is uh, very near to the connected zone of uh, the uh, CHS member uh, is uh, critical as uh, shown here. And now let us uh, straight away go for uh, the anchors. And now coming to the anchors, you can see that uh, it is uh, the various parameters are already given here. So here, uh, for example, the NED, NED provides you the maximum tensile force in the bolt to the applied loads. As you can see that uh, the maximum force, as noted here, it is 77.2, and that as expected happens in the extreme bolt is 77.2. Now let us quickly see. What exactly is the capacity uh, of the bolt uh, considering its strength alone? So we just press this button. So here we find that uh, the, the maximum applied tension is of the order of 77.2, whereas its capacity works out to be 95.4. So we have got enough for margin of safety considering that bolt alone. Now let us also see the other parameters that is uh, governing the anchor bolt design. Here, if you see, for example, the NRDC, there's a concrete con breakout resistance. So here we find that uh, considering the select set of bolts uh, that are in tension, we have got a concrete uh, providing a con resistance failure of uh, uh, capacity 630.6. .6. Based on this, uh, we find that uh, the utility ratio of the anchor bolts in tension is 84.4 percentage. So that's why we find that this uh, ratio is the same for all the bolts in tension. So because uh, those bolts that are in uh, uh, common in uh, forming a, a system of uh, tensile elements, uh, their force are summed up and then uh, the zone is checked for the conical resistance in tension. Uh, so that's what the 84.4 we have. And coming to the wells, we find that uh, obviously the wells are critical near that uh, we have got 89 percentage for the wells. And here you find that uh, the weld that is critical is connecting the M1 with the BP1 edge. Okay, so that's all about now coming to the concrete block. We don't have any problem. We find that uh, the the bearing stress, the bearing strength of the concrete is over 33.5, whereas the actual uh, compressive stress that is done for the interface of the plate and the concrete is over 20.2, that is uh, providing us a safety to the tune of 60 percentage. Then uh, coming to the Coming to the shear check, we find that the concrete has got enough shear check that is a uh, shear utility ratio is also only 13.4, so that's not of a concern to us. And uh, now, look, now let us quickly see the equivalent stress distribution. So regarding the equivalent stress, 
uh, what we find that we find that here yes it is s 2.5 even uh, the pawn uh, the pawn uh, leg is also is trusted to the tune of approximately you can say that 225 not a problem square so s 2.5 is okay and uh, also you can see that uh, the, the stresses in the base plates they have picked up to approximately 275. So, in order to reduce this stress, uh, what we can do is that we can also uh, go for a, a larger thickness of the base plate. So, that is regarding the, the overall equivalent stress distribution for the, the member as well as the base plate. Now, straight away going for the stress in the concrete, okay, as expected, we find that. Uh, the stress in the concrete is the maximum somewhere around the compressive edge and it is well within the acceptable limits. So that is all for uh, uh, the today's presentation. So please uh, do subscribe to the channel uh, because we are going to upload a number of tutorials in future uh, because uh, we'll be covering two more cases of the base plate and then we'll uh, see some, we'll cover some of the common uh, complex connections. Uh, plus uh, the seismic, uh, seismically qualified uh, okay, connections, uh, how to proceed for their design using Idea Statica. So that's all. 